traffic right so to handle such huge amount of data and the processing we need efficiency without efficiency you cannot survive and you as an employee of a particular project need to bring that element and innovation and design thinking these two skills or uh, concepts will definitely help you at every walk of your life i mean whether you go for a job or whether you start startup so said i i just wanted to set this context first before we start so that if somebody is thinking that i i don't want to go into startup still it is relevant still it is important for you guys now as i mentioned a lot of people think that innovation is something rocket science something complex something really big or a lot of times it it appears uh, i mean it is impossible to me right we we have such kind of thoughts that it is not at all possible for me to innovate let me tell you it is your misconception it is your misunderstanding because innovation is not necessary uh, a, a complex thing even if you do something which is a small thing to solve complex problems that will also be an innovation i'll i'll share one example there was a guy in us mr mirchandani his name was mr mirchandani and he used to work for a publication industry now you may think that what kind of innovation will happen in publication industry but he did something it was very small thing right which led to the saving of millions of dollars for that publication industry every year something he did for that publication industry now you may think that he converted actual books into pdf file nothing of that sort you may uh, say that he changed font size he reduced font size no the font size was same the uh, uh, material was same everything else was same now you may think what he did he simply changed the font style of that publication industry that they, they they were working for he was working for a company and he simply changed the font style not even font size same number of pages same type of books or the publications they used to publish right but by saving some ink on every page it led to the saving of millions of dollars for that particular publication uh, house so it was very small thing and it led to some innovation ultimately it added a lot of efficiency to their system and effectiveness when it comes to cost right so innovation is very simple thing uh, another example i'll share my personal example when i was working for amdocs in software testing uh, i used to do a lot of automation as well so uh, during the automation work uh, there was a process which used to take around 30 minutes so from process a to uh, process b it used to take almost 30 minutes to complete that one process because we used to access a system kept in at&t labs in united states from pune so from here connecting to that system then opening a particular application on that remote system and then performing few clicks and running few processes it used to take around 30 minutes and every team member has to spend uh, uh, around 30 minutes for that particular task at least twice a day now what we did we 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 had a had a discussion with the developer we had some understanding of the overall system and ultimately see there was a front end there was a back end ultimately that front end part was calling a script in the back end so what i did i just explored the system though it was not allowed still i i got few permissions and and and, and i explored that particular uh, uh, application and then i got to know that there is a script which is running the entire process and it was in the back end so what we did we bypassed that front end part and then we wrote a script i i wrote just four line script and after that using that script we started running that entire process within point not not 376 seconds so within less than second earlier it used to take 30 minutes now it started taking less than a second you can imagine the amount of efficiency and the effectiveness that four line script was offering to us and that was an innovation i i i was rewarded for that and all these things happened but apart from that it was simple logic that you put into perspectives simply looking at the same thing differently will give you that perspective uh, which is which is fundamental in nature when it comes to innovation so if you want to innovate first of all you have to think innovation as a simple thing achievable thing it is a possible thing for everybody of you 
even a farmers these days they they do a lot of things creatively to solve simple challenges they don't uh, write sops for that they don't write any any request for that they don't uh, uh, have any lab for that they simply use their brain logic to solve simple problems which they face in their day to day life innovation is that so if you are thinking that you are not an innovator or you cannot be an innovator it is your misconception i'll tell you that if you think logically and if you start looking at same thing differently with multiple perspectives definitely it will be very simple thing for you and it will not appear complex or kind of rocket science of course rocket science is vast and complex but innovation is not and it is not really big or scary thing so don't get afraid if you have good logical abilities and if you have good perspective about uh, uh, same thing or different perspectives about same thing definitely you can innovate a lot of a uh, lot, lot of things in your project as a student or whenever you join some company or when you start your own startup that time you can definitely innovate <clears throat> now i would like to simplify innovation first and the foremost thing it is not always about wow factor of course few wow factors are innovative things but not every innovation is a wow factor it it could be a simple thing like i mentioned just changing the font style led to a lot of savings and innovation so it was not that wow factor they they didn't do anything uh, 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 fancy uh, or something which was glorious enough but it was a small thing right and it takes time shortcuts needs exploration for example if you are in pune for the first time and you want to travel from location a to location b then first you have to understand the entire terrain of course you can explore on google map but still imagine you don't have google map you have entered pune for the first time and you want to travel from destination a to destination b you have to explore the entire territory first how many roads are there how many routes are there and then after understanding and spending some time maybe after a month maybe after two months after traveling that path regularly you may come to know about some shortcut so to get that shortcut first you need to explore the entire system like i did in the uh, uh, that 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 automation part i explored the entire system and then i got to know that there is a script and which could be triggered using another script which we need to write understanding that took almost a month but writing that script took almost uh, uh, almost few few seconds or few minutes and then executing that particular uh, uh, script and implementing that it took few seconds so in this case that exploration which took a month was important understanding the terrain will take time without understanding the complete system you cannot find areas to bring efficiency so that needs a lot of exploration and it takes time so don't rush when you want, uh, when when you uh, try to innovate something because at what point in time what will come to your mind and what thought will get triggered uh, we don't know that innovation is about something which is unexplored so there is no systematic path to innovation there is no sop for innovation of course there are different tools and techniques and methods however they will it 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 is not that they will always work because innovation is for the unexplored part and you are the explorer for that particular area so it is as simple as that so <clears throat> if you ask me what is innovation i'll put it this way it is three steps process first one find the problem don't create any because sometimes in, in the process of finding problem we tend to create a new set of problems so that is not a good thing find the actual problem then step number 2 is find the best solution for that and step number 3 which is the utmost important step in the entire process is find the best method which is efficient uh, to implement this solution now if innovation was thought as a life skill creativity would never been forgotten a lot of times we tend to follow the regular path <coughs> right Uh, a lot of times a lot of people say that innovation it is only for scholars it is only for talkers it is only for uh, people who who have a research mindset no it is not it, this is the conditioning of our mind and which we need to change 
simply find the problem, find the solution and find the best way to implement that solution. If you understand these three steps, nobody can stop you from becoming an innovator. And it is very important to have innovative and creative mindset if you want to survive and sustain in the industry for a longer duration. Now coming to design thinking, it is one of the tools uh, used to solve different problems innovatively, especially something which is wicked in nature, something which is uh, not so regular, something which is unusual in nature, such problems, design thinking is used to solve such kind of problems. And the best part of this method is it is human centric. You think of people who are suffering or facing that problem uh, from their perspective. You put yourself in their shoes and you try to understand their perspectives, their emotions, their feelings, uh, the root cause of their, their challenge, uh, and then you try to solve that. And that is the reason it is very human centric. Now there are five steps in this particular process. First one is empathize, wherein you try to understand uh, the perspectives of person who is facing a problem. Then once you understand various insights about the problem, you come and you define that particular problem in the most simplified way. That is the step number two. Step number three is ideate. Once you define the problem, you, you, you think of a lot of ideas to solve that particular problem. And then you finalize few, uh, few, few ideas which will actually solve the root cause of that problem. Once that is done, then you get the solution for that. So it is important to build a prototype of your solution which can justify uh, the effectiveness of the solution that you're offering to solve the problem. And then the testing part, it is it is also important. You test it so that uh, you're, you, you get a confidence whether your prototype is working properly, whether it is solving the challenge or not, uh, how the user is uh, perceiving your solution, your prototype. <coughs> so these are five steps and it is nothing but the, uh, uh, what we say, if you, if you look at fundamentally, it is like the SDLC cycle that we have. First you gather requirements, then you uh, design, then you develop, then you test, then you uh, put it into production. Similarly, it is empathize phases uh, like the requirement gathering phase. If you do the requirement gathering properly, you will get the best and the apt requirement from the customers, right? So empathize is a method or a step wherein you you get the correct requirement of the person who is facing the problem and then you define and then you design and then you solve that problem it is it is it is not very different from sdlc but the more emphasis is on the empathize phase the phase one wherein we understand the problem if you understand the problem properly then it is almost half solved you don't have to put in a lot of efforts to solve that problem because you will go to the root cause of that problem. So let's start with the first case study, uh, which will which will help you understand why design thinking, how it is different. Now, if you look at this particular slide, you will see the MRI scanner, right? <clears throat> A lot of times uh, when, when we see this particular device, we get afraid, forget about uh, uh, kids, even we adults, we also get afraid of MRI scanner machine because there is a lot of noise. There is a lot of uh, what we say that that entire experience is so scary that even in small kids, they start crying, right? So now the doctors in US, what they did, they took this as a challenge or a case study to apply and implement design thinking. Now, after the implementation of design thinking, what they did, they redesigned MRI scanner like a game park or some fun zone for kids. Now, here the challenge was not that MRI machine or the noise, but the experience of people who were undergoing the MRI scanning. Design thinking helped those doctors to change that particular experience, which was human centric. The root cause was the experience, not the device. Here the, it, it is same device, here it is same noise. However, the experience of a person is completely different in this particular context. They, they, gave, they, they told those kids that you are entering in a game park, you are entering a play zone. 
take it as a challenge and then the conditioning of their mind was completely different than earlier and they took it as a challenge and they 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 help those kids eliminate the fear and they help them uh, get a confidence uh, like like they, they they get the confidence while playing a game right and it was possible only because of design thinking <clears throat> so design thinking will take you to the root cause which was the experience of this particular mri scanning process it was not the fear but the experience which was causing that fear which was the root cause <clears throat> now let's dig into the first step which is empathy so first of all you have to understand sympathy and empathy these two are different things for example uh, when we see a beggar if you feel bad for that beggar and if you give let's say 10 rupees 100 rupees or you may offer a food to that beggar that is a sympathetic approach you feel bad for that person so you want to help and that help is at superficial level how many days that uh, beggar will use your 10 rupees or for how many days you will feed that person right <coughs> so sympathetic approach will stop you at a superficial level however the empathetic approach is something different now when you see a beggar if you try to understand why that person is begging why that person is in trauma why that person is in such a uh, such a condition right that will help you understand his real situation and real problem maybe you understand uh, that uh, he he was fired from his job and then he got depressed and because of that depression he is acting like that or maybe you you come to know that you might come to know that uh, uh, he faced some uh, horrible incident at his family and because of that he entered into this kind of situation you may also understand that he is capable of doing something maybe he is educated or maybe even if he is not educated uh, uh, he can do some 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 work right you will understand that when you empathize with that person when you think like that person why when you when you go to the why when you go to the root of that particular challenge why that person is begging and then you may try to help him uh, get some job if he were, if it was because of uh, what we say the first cause somebody had f- fired him from his job right or maybe you can counsel him maybe you can take him to some counseling room and somebody will help him right or maybe you can offer him shelter which will also offer him a job or some work and then his livelihood will uh, will be taken care so empathetic approach will always say that don't give a fish right but teach how to fish <clears throat> it is very important to understand the root cause of a problem and empathize space will take you to the root cause of any any problem that you want to solve using design thinking being in a, in the shoes of customers so when it comes to different projects in companies you have to understand why that customer needs this kind of project how this project will solve your customer what is the pain areas of your customers right and it is it is just just to understand the situation properly so that you can solve that challenge efficiently right understanding the needs of your customer is very important without that you you cannot solve the real problem of your customers then going deep and making it human centric which means you have to understand how your customer will feel while using your application how that customer will think while using your application right <coughs> and the most important thing is keeping aside all assumptions because a lot of times we assume things and it leads to something different something which is not even required right so keeping all assumptions aside and validating every point that you observe is very important when it comes to empathize so in in simple term just observe and note down you don't have to do anything else you don't have to assume you don't have to presume you don't have to uh, uh, what to say uh, uh, think something like it is maybe because of that you have to validate that anything that you note down you have to validate anything you validate you have to note down it is as simple as that once you gather a lot of information once you gather a lot of details about the situation then the next step comes is to define when when you are about to define a problem it is very simple 
uh, it has to be very simple. It has to be self explanatory. It has to be. It should not be a lengthy. When I have visited a lot of colleges, I have a lot of uh, visited a lot of companies. I see their vision and statements like vision and mission statements like an essay. Nobody will remember that. Even even their core team, core committee members will not remember that. Uh, the, those lines and those essays. A vision statement, a mission statement has to be uh, up to 10, 10 words. That's it. Not beyond that, because that will give you a lot of clarity. <clears throat> For example, talking about evolving X, our vision is youth empowerment towards entrepreneurship. That's it. And our mission is 1 million youths towards entrepreneurship. Empowering 1 million youths towards entrepreneurship. Less than 10 words, easy to understand, easy to remember. Right. So def definition of a problem is very crucial when it comes to solving that problem. <clears throat> In the first phase, you must note down few few points and you have noted on a few points, right? Then. Analyzing those those uh, critical points and then getting insights while defining that problem is very crucial. After analysis of those points and the observations that you had in the first phase, put your problem statement in simple and single sentence. That is called the definition of the problem and that is what required in defined phase. Also, you can define the various personas. For example, uh, uh, persona is nothing but the segment that we uh, have, customer segments that we have with different characteristics, with different, uh, uh, what to say, distinguishing factors, which must be considered while solving that problem. Maybe uh, uh, youths, youth is a persona. Let's say XYZ is a persona who is young, who is youth, who is between uh, 18 to 24 years of age, who is an engineering student. So these are different char characteristics of that persona. So while defining the problem, you will define the problem as well as you will define the persona, the person who is facing that problem. And then define the vision and the mission for solving the problem. <clears throat> this is phase two, get to the point. In third phase, which is ID8, uh, there are different techniques and different tools uh, uh, which are being used by the industry to solve the problems or to, to solve the uh, challenges faced by uh, different users, different customers. Now the fundamental thing when you ideate is avoid but. When you when you discuss few ideas, avoid but. And use only and during, uh, during your discussion. For example, I may say that I want to come to your college, but there could be X, Y, Z reason. When I add but, then the argument or, or the discussion stops it, uh, then and there itself. I want to come to your college, but I don't have time. I want to come to your college, but I don't have money. I want to come to your college, but I don't have knowledge. Something the, it, it will the, the discussion will end. The ideation will end and it will not take you to something which could solve the challenge. But if you use and in your discussion, for example, I want to come to your college and I want to conduct a session and I want to help your students and I want to help them understand innovation and I want to help them innovate, right? So when you use and during the discussion, especially during the ideation, you build a chain of thoughts and that chain of thoughts may lead you to something which is innovative. It will also take you to the root cause of the problem, which is very important when it comes to ideation. <clears throat> now there are different ideation methods. Brainstorming method is also there. You, you throw every single idea which comes to your mind you gather a lot of ideas first you uh, diverge and then you converge converge means what you you finalize few ideas after getting numerous ideas now scamper is another method if you are trying to solve an existing particular problem then scamper is <clears throat> used to solve the existing uh, existing uh, or modify the existing uh, what do you say a solution that you have so scamper is nothing but substitute Combine, adopt, modify, put to other use case, eliminate and rearrange. Substitute which is not required in your particular solution. Combine few things so that the efficiency will improve. Adopt few things so that the 
newness or uh, what to say creativity will be added to your existing stuff modify few things if it is not working put to another use case to get more uh, uh, areas of application for your existing stuff eliminate something which is redundant in nature something which is uh, occurring regularly and something which is not required and then rearrange something so that it will offer the efficiency right and don't forget worst possible idea when you ideate to solve a challenge defined by you you must discuss worst possible idea as well because that would be wild idea that will be something completely different something something completely out of the box <clears throat> so even at evolving x we always conduct this worst possible idea session when we try to ideate because it it might be a wild thought but sometimes we get completely different perspective and we, for innovation different perspectives are most helpful right so once you once you once you get enough ideas just try to restrict to few of them which are handling or which are catering to the actual root cause of the problem of course during first phase that is empathize phase and define phase you got the root cause now after getting multiple ideas it is important to finalize few ideas which will solve that root cause because if you solve the root cause you don't have to uh, solve rest of the problems for example one of the problem could be you want to buy a house second problem could be you want to buy a car but you don't have a car uh, third would be you don't have medical facilities <coughs> uh, now the root cause of these three ch challenges is you don't have money because if you have money you can purchase house if you have money you can purchase a car if you have money you can get best of the best medical and health facilities so the root cause here is not that you don't have car you don't have house or you don't have access to medical system but you don't have money and how will you get a money by getting a job so for that you might not have employability skills right or the right set of knowledge so getting that knowledge here the challenge the root cause is lack of knowledge and the solution will be getting that knowledge which has nothing to do with the money with the medical system with the house that you want to buy so the root cause if you if you get that knowledge ultimately you will get a job once you get a job ultimately you will get a money once you get money ultimately you will get your house your car and access to medical system so it works that way so it is very important to define empathize define the root cause and then ideate to get the best possible idea to solve that particular root cause <clears throat> once you get the best possible idea <coughs> try to build a prototype uh, which could justify your idea now prototype is not an actual product it is simply a proof of concept a working model or a demo model of your offering that uh, that that you want to cater now during the experimentation phase implement the most efficient effective and easy method because that will eventually hold a potential to become an innovation something which is completely different something which is most effective uh, uh, will always work as an innovation right so during experimentation phase try to go for the simplest method uh, try to go for something which is most efficient as well as effective right and then perspectives while while building a prototype always think feel and behave or consider how uh, your user will think behave and feel while using your prototype it is very important during the prototype phase and reduce the time to market it, it has to be very inexpensive and scaled down version so so that you will not waste a lot of time in building prototype itself because you have to build the actual product as well in future so prototype you don't have to ensure the quality in actual product you have to ensure the quality <clears throat> and then once your prototype is ready then simply test it by considering all aspects there are uh, functional testing methods there are uh, performance testing methods there are different uh, types of testing so you can you can you can choose few few uh, uh, methods which are relevant to your prototype and you can organize uh, that testing sessions as per the areas that you want to uh, that you want to test your uh, prototype then the more focus has to be on the user experience as i mentioned your customer is the ultimate uh, decision maker for your prototype so think like them act like them apart from that feel like them while testing 
testing your prototype and consider how they will think behave or use your particular uh, prototype now agile and devops methodologies these two are the method these two methodologies are being used uh, by a lot of companies i'll not go deep into it but uh, 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 you can explore it uh, online <clears throat> It is important to organize demo for your users on regular basis. Uh, you should always organize demo of your prototype and different changes that you uh, that you bring on uh, 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 on the table. Because if you if you go after the completion of the entire prototype and if your customer uh, uh, is not happy with that, you have to reinvent the wheel again. You have to go and start from the scratch. But if you schedule demos on a regular interval with your customers, then whenever your customer is unhappy he will definitely tell you that he wants to uh, see some changes and he will inform you that and then it will be easy for you to change a particular module of your entire prototype rather than changing the entire prototype itself right so it is very important to have regular demos with your your customers so that you will get their feedback you their opinions and then redefine <coughs> that particular prototype if your customer is not satisfied here the quality matters when it comes to experience right <clears throat> so in summary design thinking if you ask me uh, often we think that uh, something is a problem but design thinking will help you go to the root cause of that problem often pro the problem we try to solve is not the actual problem but the superficial layer on the actual root cause of the problem the experience of the what say what we say people who were undergoing mrs scanner that was the problem not the mrs scanner the same observation which came out uh, uh, in that case study right and a lot of times when you try to solve the actual problem uh, it 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 takes care uh, the solution takes care of rest of the superficial problems itself and also it is not just about doing right things but also doing about doing things rightly if you focus more on the requirement gathering in sdlc cycle or in empathize phase then you don't have to do anything else it is a right thing in a right way to solve that particular problem <clears throat> if you want to know more about design thinking or innovation or even entrepreneurship uh, this is a book which we have recently published it is available on different platforms you can explore after this particular uh, session uh, uh, you can also use students as a core uh, on notion press only it, it is working so you can get discounts and all these things so uh, if you want to gather different perspectives about innovation i'll just simply give you what is evolving x it is simply a three steps process for entrepreneurship evo which is first phase that is rise up in which you understand how to become an epicenter of excellence to bring that transformation around the world through technology through business through startups for that you need vast and varied exposure and optimized operations right so e stands for epicenter of excellence v stands for vast and varied exposure and o stands for optimized operations and this is the first phase wherein you rise up as an entrepreneur once you rise up as an entrepreneur you go to the next phase that is lvi which is build up you identify local challenges and try to solve them you build a value proposition v is for value proposition you create a value system for your startup and also you bring on value to your customers and you do it innovatively so during the build up phase you lvi that is identifying local challenges to add value proposition in an innovative way and then the third phase which is ngx that is scale up phase in which you need networking and partnership when you scale up you need governance structure and then x factor for your business which will ensure your exponential growth not a regular linear growth so this methodology is also extremely useful i i uh, we work with 120 institutions in maharashtra we have types with them mou signed with them so very soon i'll be visiting uh, these colleges including yours so that time also we can discuss in detail about this particular concept for startups under iic or under any other initiative at your institution so uh, that's it from my side uh, if you want to follow us you can follow us on instagram evolving x for youths and uh, also you can visit us on evolvingx.org and i think uh, uh, we are good to start with the q and a <clears throat> thank you 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any doubt Any from students? students? And first of all, I'm sorry, I'm under the weather. So in between, I was taking some pauses. I, I'm not keeping well. Uh, so extremely sorry for that. No issue. <coughs> yep. Students, any kind of doubts you can ask? The podium is yours. No questions. Means you understood everything or nothing. I hope you understood everything. <clears throat> okay, sir. So thank you, sir. On behalf of Trinity Academy of Engineering, I extend a deep vote of thanks to our guest speaker, Mr. Ramol, sir, who spare time from his busiest schedule to share your knowledge and innovation. Today we had an opportunity to, to hear your thoughts and this will surely be going to help and encourage our students. I would like to thank our beloved principal, sir, staff members, students for making this function successful. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we'll conclude this session. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Students will share feedback link with you on WhatsApp group. Okay, thank you.